So you would like to know how to make a human eye in mosaic? Well, you're in the right place. I'm Helen Miles and I'm here to teach you all the tips and tricks you need to make mosaics. So this is part one of a two part mini series on making human eyes in mosaic. And in this part, we're going to be looking at choosing your materials and getting the tones right. I'm going to be showing you how to create a human eye in mosaic. And I'm showing you this to start off with, a photograph, a very graphic close-up photograph of a human eye to show you what we're not doing. We're not replicating the human eye as it appears um, in real life or in a photograph. If you're interested in doing that, then mosaic is probably not the medium for you. With mosaic, we're paring down the, the eye to the essentials so we can create a sense of an eye. Um, the eye will look eye-like, but it will not be anatomically correct or perfect in any sense at all. The simplest way to look at creating an eye in mosaic is to exclude colour. So we're just going to look at the grayscale or the black and white version of exactly the same eye. So now we can see the different tonal values, the, di the different lights and darks which are inherent in, in the eye. So obviously the pupil is much darker. Um, the area around the pupil is a kind of medium dark. There's lots of variation within it and it's got a kind of dark around here. But because we're excluding detail, we're, we're talking in generalisation. We're simplifying the eye. So I'm not looking at the, at the detail of this. I'm looking at the tone. So that's quite a dark tone, even though it's got lights within it. And then you've got the eyelid. Um, there's a shadow of the eyelid behind it and the eyelashes, which make the lid overall a dark tone. Under the eye is obviously very different from the white of the eye. The white is very distinct and stands out as white or bright, clear uh, and lighter. Whereas under the eye and above the eye is a medium tone. So unfortunately, this, this picture doesn't show you any higher. Um, but above that, of course, is the eyebrow, which is dark. And then there's a, a light, often a lighter area. Of course, it depends on where the light is coming from and what eye you're looking at. And each eye is different. Um, but for the purposes of making a, of a mosaic eye, I'm just extrapolating the tones, the darks, mediums and lights, in order to make a mosaic of it. Here I've drawn, um, I've drawn an eye and I've pared it down to the absolute essentials um, because as I said with mosaic we're not aiming for anatomical correctness. We're aiming to get an idea of an eye um, and in order to do that we're going to work with the, the various tones of the materials. So this drawing shows the different areas which are going to be tonally different. Um, so you've got the darker of the pupil, the, the kind of med, the medium, mid-tone mid around the pupil, light um, in the white, mid-tone here, darker around the lid and the um, eyelash. Again, a, a kind of white, bright area here, a mid-tone here, and then the dark of the eyebrow. And now we've introduced colour. Um, I'm going to be using vitreous glass. Um, these are specialist mosaic tiles um, and they have a vast range of colours. But I've separated out, um, I've chosen some particular colours and separated them out by dark tone, medium tone and light tone. So that you can see what I mean about the tone rather than the actual colour, I hope. So what, what I mean by tone, or another word for it is value, is the amount of light in that colour or hue. So you can see these are much darker, they've got less light. This is a medium range and these are much lighter. Um, and the other thing to consider is the kind of intensity of the colour. So with the glass you can get these very intense um, colours which, um, well, for actually for the purposes of this, 
purposes of this eye are not something I'm going to be using. But do watch out for intensity because it can be very distracting if you're putting intense values ne next to um, calmer or less intense ones. So, for example, for the white of the eye, I could use this pure white that you can um, buy like this. But in fact, it has that intensity. It has a kind of brilliance to it, which would make it really, really stand out, um, which I don't particularly want. You can do the same with found and recycled materials, of course. But when you're using natural materials, um, there's a lot more... There's a, lot, there's a lot more to consider. There's, there's a lot more variation within your particular pieces. Um, so these are broadly divided into um, dark, mid and light. But it, it depends. It depends on which bit of that plate, for example, I'm going to choose to use. Um, obviously, if I chose the back, then it would belong in the, in the light category. And even within um, a mid tone like this, um, there's plenty of darks and there's plenty of lights. So it's, it's by all means, I mean, it's great fun using uh, found and recycled materials, but it does take a little bit more time sorting them out and working out where they lie in the tonal range. If you're going to use them to make represent, representational mosaics like an eye. So I've stuck my drawing of an eye to a board with sellotape and now I'm putting a layer of contact paper, sticky back plastic, as we call it in the UK over the top of the eye and I'm just going to tape that down as well um, and the reason I'm doing this is for the purposes of this film so I can show you the kind of working out of the choosing of the colours and the tones whereas in actual fact if I, if I was really making a mosaic I would have decided on those tones and would have been going straight straight into making making the mosaic. I'm going to keep the pupil intense, so I'm going to use this pure black, which is just black. There's no other word to describe it. Um, and I've spent some time thinking about what I'm going to put in the area around the pupil. Um, and I think I'm going to go for this variegated blue, which has got a little bit of gold veining in it. Um, so it's not, it's it, internally, it's um it's in between the, the dark 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 and the the mid the mid tones that I was showing you a moment ago. So I'm just putting a few samples around here. And I like it because it's variated. Variegated, do I mean it's varied. It's not a, well it's not one colour, it's got depth to it. So which seems to me quite appropriate for an eye. Then, as I said, for the white of the eye, I don't want the super duper white, so I'm just going to use this cream Winkleman's and maybe a bit of grey. Um, always when you're making something that's representational or, you know, based on something in, in real life, you don't tend to have blocks of one colour. There's always a little um, mix of different colours within it. So, yeah, that's what I... Think I'm going to use for the white of the eye. So let's have a look at the um, eyelash stroke eyelid now. Um, so this is a nice dark brown. It's not, it's not black by any means and it's got quite a lot of speckling in it. Um, so let's see what that looks like. We want plenty of contrast. We want the eyelid to kind of be distinct from from the other parts of the eye and I think that's going to work so that's that's a definite dark so I'm just I'm just laying them really loosely here I'm not um, laying them as I will when I'm making it okay and now we've got the mid-tone here and I think I might use different mid-tones we've got one here and one here um, so perhaps let's try this. It's 
Yeah. And then a different mid-tone down here. Hmm, I quite like that. So for the white here, I don't, I don't want it to in any way um, compete with the white of the eye. So I want to use a lighter tone, but not one that's too close to the white of the eye. I'm not sure if that pink might be a bit too much. But this might work actually, so let's try that. So no, normally I, I cut the tesserae into squares, so the, I'm just cutting them into rectangles to see how the colours look together when they're placed next to each other. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, and I'm going to go for another mid-tone here. Um, that's quite right. Yeah, I don't think so. Let me do the eyebrow. So I've chosen a darker. This is this is a purple actually. Oh, that's the midtone I was looking for. Yeah. So this is the midtone beneath the purple eyebrow. So although it it is technically purple, in fact, it's dark enough that that purpleness won't be um, dominating. It won't be immediately obvious. You won't think, golly, that person's got a purple eyebrow. Yeah. Okay. And then we've got the mid-tone here. And this little detail. Yeah, there we go. So I've chosen my colours. And I'm now ready to start making the mosaic. I hope that helped you see how the tonal differences between the various um, colours is really important when you're considering something like making a human eye. So um, I'm now going to end this video and, and I'm making a different video to show you the process of making and laying and cutting the eye. Um, so I hope you find it helpful and if you like this video and you'd like to see more, then please subscribe below.